Welcome back. I hope you're all ready to start your engines and race into another fun Friday 4-H activity from Wayne Township 4-H. Here in Wayne Township, some of our 4-Hers literally have the Indianapolis Motor Speedway in their backyard. So let's look at our activity for this week, which is a spool racer that utilizes kinetic and potential energy. When most people hear the word energy, they think of kinetic energy, that is, energy in motion, like when you're zooming down the best sledding hill around on your sled. But that sledding trip wouldn't be possible without potential energy or stored energy. When you pull that sled back up the hill, you're creating potential energy that can be released into kinetic energy. This is the same concept we're going to use for our spool racers. We're going to store potential energy that can be changed into kinetic energy to make our cars go. Another example of kinetic and potential energy are the little toys you have in your kits. When you turn the toy inside out, you're storing potential energy. When it pops and jumps up in the air, that you can see kinetic energy in action. Speaking of your kids, let's take a look at what all is inside of them. You have a handout on potential versus kinetic energy, written instructions for how to make the spool racer. These are going to be slightly different from what we're going to do today, but you should be able to follow along with either the video or the written instructions. A dowel rod, a rubber beam, an empty thread spool, your popper toy, and a race car wrap. Oh, and I almost forgot a paper clip. Things that you are going to need is something to color your race car wrap with, like markers. You could use colored pencils or crayons. A pair of scissors. A glue stick. Maybe a piece of tape and maybe a toothpick. And we'll get to those things here in a few minutes. You are going to start off by coloring your race car and decorating it. You can do this however you like. I would like to say thank you to Nigel Cowell for the original artwork for our race car wraps today. Once you're done coloring it, you're going to fold it in half so that your race cars are both going the same direction. If you like, you can take and cut off the extra paper to make it a little more race car shape. Just be careful that you folded it exactly in half that you don't accidentally cut off part of your race car on one side. Next, take your glue stick and cover the inside of one of the sides of the race car with glue. Then take and wrap it around one end of your dowel rod. You want to make sure the other end of your dowel rod is sticking out so you can attach your spool mechanism that will drive your race car. You're going to anchor your rubber band inside your paper clip. If your paper clip is bigger than your thread spool, you may need to bend it. If that's going to be hard for you, you could also substitute a toothpick that you can break easily um, to go in this part. If it's too long, your wheel's going to kind of bump as it turns. Um, so you want it to fit inside your spool. Take the unanchored end of your rubber band and slide it through the center of the spool. So here's my paper clip with the rubber band anchored to it. It fits inside the diameter of the spool. If it didn't, I could take and bend it and put it in the little openings that you see here, or I could use a toothpick instead. I just want to make sure it's not hanging over the edges of the spool. If you do not bend your paper clip in to keep it in place, you may want to put a piece of tape over it to keep it from spinning around. The same goes if you decide to use a toothpick instead. And here you can see the rubber band sticking out of the other end of the spool. You'll want to take the end of your dowel rod without your race car and put it through that rubber band. Now, you can take and turn the dowel rod around to wind the rubber band up tight, creating potential energy. When you set it back down on the table, 
it should zoom forward. If it goes backwards, you want to wind it the other way. I have to apologize. My phone died on me, and I lost my video that showed the spool racer in action. Um, and I took mine apart so I could make more kits to put out in our free little libraries. But there's lots of other videos that I've linked on our page that show the school racers in action. So now let's think like an engineer. With some of our other kits, we've talked about the design process. Where you take and evaluate what changes you can make to improve the design of what you're creating. Think about what would happen with the following modifications. Do you think the length of the rubber band you use will make a difference in either how fast your car goes or how far it goes? Try switching out rubber bands for shorter and longer ones. What if you use more than one rubber band? Take a couple of rubber bands that are the same size and anchor both of them on your paper clip and see if that makes a difference in how much power you can create or how much potential energy you can store. How does that translate into kinetic energy? Does your racer just do a burnout on the table and not really move very much? Maybe you need more friction. Take and wrap a rubber band around the edge of the spool so it's making contact with the table. This will create more friction and should move your car forward a bit easier. But too much friction can slow it down. Experiment and find out what design changes can make your school racer even better. You can try the ones listed here or come up with your own ideas. I hope you've enjoyed this activity. Um, make sure to check out our website at waynetownship4h.org and click on Fun Friday for more information, additional activities, and more ideas for activities you can do with your 4-H club.